Um, so my son came first, he came in 2012 when I was um, finishing my senior year of college. And he, I, I always say like my resurrection came from Jesus Christ, as you know, my faith in being a Christian. But then like Akeem was like the, the second coming as well in my life. I was doing all these things that were prescribed for me to be the things that I should be doing. And Akeem was this blessing that was not a part of that prescribed plan. And, but what it brought to my life, I would never be able to, to minimize or discount. I'm eternally grateful for his life. Lord have mercy. You think you could be one of your brothers in basketball? If we was playing on my rim, yeah, that rim. <laughs> they got the whole big rim. It's like, who knows, 10 feet taller than me. Oh, wow. Like, like, look, say, say, look, look, you see, you know one of those pyramids? I'm like a little bitty, I'm like a little bitty ants a bat. <laughs> Just crawling said, around. But I thought you said you was the best hooper. You didn't even need to go to basketball camp. You know everything. Well, I do like basketball You're the best camp. player. I am the best player. Okay. But you would think I could be the 10-year-old and the 12-year-old? I mean, I, I mean, mean a saying, you talking a lot of stuff. Like, you could just beat everybody. That's all I'm saying. So you make it seem like I don't have to put you in basketball camp. You are already the greatest. Well, I want to be in basketball camp. Oh, okay camp. then. All right. I like that. What really drives me is the joy of him being in my stomach and singing to him and writing to him and reading to him. And like when he first did that weird alien thing where his foot was scraping across my stomach, like those moments, those are the things that drive me when I'm dealing with my son. It's like that joy, that love, that like um, peaceful center space. He's always asking about like high level things. I can have like a real adult conversation with him. And then at the same time, I have to remember that he's a child, but he's brilliant. I mean, everyone loves a king and it's been like that since he was born. He's always had like this really big smile and just like a big glow about him. I remember when um, he was younger, I used to get that all the time about how he has such a bright spirit, such a joyful energy, um, which he still carries with him now. It's just now it comes with like charisma and he thinks he's cool and all this other stuff. Um, but he's one of those type of people that is just genuinely curious about everything in life. Where is Akeem Smith at? Oh, I'm right here! Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm all the way at the top! Okay, I can deal with that. And I am Wimby, and Kari, and KD, and Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant. That's right. And Larry Bird. Oh. <laughs> How you gonna randomly come for Larry Bird? <laughs> Kids. And Shaquille O'Neal. Who was teaching you this old history? <laughs> and Scottie Pippen. Oh. And Derrick Rose. And Jimmy Butler. Wow. And my family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't play basketball. Wait, what? <laughs> we talk about race. We talk about um, police. Like, you know, he's a child of organizer. So, obviously, like, these big things come up. He's been at every meeting process. When I was getting my master's, he was in class with me. So there's nothing that I could say I haven't exposed him to. Um, so sometimes when he asks questions, it's like, I know that he can take on these big things, but sometimes I, I wonder like how much, how much of the big stuff do I want him to wrestle with? Um, and then with my daughter, she's special. Um, I had a home birth, I had a water birth with her, and she's a Capricorn child. She's very determined. Um, we had a naming ceremony for her, so uh, we waited for seven days to see what her attributes were. Everyone said she's so strong, she's so strong. So uh, we named her Yari, which means God will raise up and set free. And um, that's the perfect name for her, because whenever there's something going on, if there's something that she wants to do, she's gonna find a way to do it. And I know that as she grows and matures and interacts with the world, she's gonna carry that spirit with her. So for Yari, I just kind of let her be her. And I nurture and I support it. And I don't try to put her into like a binary of she has to be gentle or she has to be soft or she has to be, like Yari is a fiery spirit and I allow her to do that. And I know that it's gonna serve her well. Because it's 
like, okay, if I don't have the child care, then I can't go to work. And if I can't go to work, then I can't pay for the child care. And it's like this vicious cycle of worry and fear. And it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. It definitely should be like universal, just as universal as health care should be, as education should be like child care as well. I just don't understand this thing where folks have to choose between food and child care and rent. And, you know, just like, and we're not even getting to the things that we want yet these are just the things we need to survive to continue to want things that we can't have like it's crazy so that's something i'm really happy about the fact that it's a black woman um the fact that you know we can support each other in that way that she can help me with yara and i can support her financially and also just to create like you know that 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 collective spirit of community and family i want yara to be raised like that um i want her to have that and i'm really happy for Akeem too because his school you know he's with a lot of the black babies and a lot of his teachers are black and they talk about things that he is uh, you know surrounded by in his life and so it just makes me feel good to know that both my children when I'm not with them are still able to be them full selves and that that's encouraged. Basically for me the way that my motherhood and my work go together is that these are two beautiful human beings that have inside of them from the time they're conceived to as they grow up and mature to be adults, these things that are intrinsic to them. And then as they continue to grow, they're gonna interact with the world and those things are gonna impact their intrinsic attributes and values. And so my work is always, how do I help create the conditions for them to be supported in what they naturally wanna do, whether it be art, whether it be sports, whether it be, you know, being great orators, whether it be whatever, you know, like whatever it is that they want to do in multiples of those things, I want to be doing the work to create the space for them to do that without being hindered. The only part of Africa that wasn't. And yep. so that's like you was talking about, it's just a pride um, to be from that part of Africa, there's a there's a big pride and even Jamaicans and, and Rastafarians, if that's the way you say it, Rastafari, yeah. they they identify with the, the, the culture of Ethiopia and Eritrea mm -hmm. just based on the fact that it was never colonized.